Let me let me just um, ask you about the second part of the notion of a PhD as a journey, which is the idea of a journey of personal development. Now, I think if I walked around the libraries of your university, I wouldn't find shelves and shelves of books about, um, you know, doing a PhD in terms of um, personal uh, journey of personal development. It's less discussed amongst people, I think. It's more subjective, more private, perhaps. So again, can I just put you on the spot and say, in terms of completing a journey, uh, completing a PhD as a journey of personal development, what, what would be your, the insight you'd want to tell people there? Yeah, um, I think you need to start with thinking of how you approach the PhD in the first place. For me, it's it's more like a collection. You as a person are, is a, are a collection of identities. Being a PhD student is just one identity and it's a temporary identity, it's just an identity that you uh, can acquire for three to four years. Your, your life is not about the PhD, it's just one part of so many identities. You might mm. be uh, a father, you might be um, um, have a side job, you might be um, I don't know. You have so many. You, like you might be taking care of someone uh, or have a cat, even that is taking too much yes. of your time to play with her uh, or with it. Uh, so again, putting things into perspective, knowing that the PhD is just one part of who you are. It's not all who you are. So if you if we start from that uh, idea, then a PhD is something that helps you toward personal growth, toward becoming a better person, not only a better researcher but a better person. And if we start by a better researcher, then whatever books you are reading, whatever writing you are doing is not enough because everyone is expected to do that. What will make you unique? Where is your edge? And that's where you need to look beyond the books that you are reading, beyond what is expecting from your thesis, from your dissertation. Conferences is one is an excellent yeah, way yeah. that uh, I believe pushes students, uh, PhD students to go beyond their comfort zone um, starting from writing abstracts um, that they might not be very familiar with, uh, getting rejection uh, every other uh, day uh, and just being resilient and apply again, uh, knowing people, knowing about the dynamics of, of working with others, being on a panel with others, um, being asked questions from audiences, traveling abroad as well, because not all conferences are international. Yes, you might yes. be more familiar with conferences in your uh, own university or your own town and your own country, but you need to push further. Traveling is one of the unique opportunities that you might not get after a PhD, because again, after a PhD, you are not as young as you have started. So you might have much more responsibility, whether family responsibility or career responsibility, that will not allow you to travel and to go to other places as you are during your PhD. So again, in terms of profession, uh, conferences, networking, meeting people. Again, I was very blessed, for example, to uh, to attend one of your workshops at my early stage of my PhD and to have uh, a private, not private, but like an informal meeting after that with you personally. Um, I'm not necessarily at that point, at least I wasn't very uh, focused on your areas of, of work and you were not um, studying or researching my areas. Yeah. But again, being in the field of academia, being interested in different, in bigger projects, bigger um, ideas, that makes us stay together and find things that we talk about. And you will find many people um, coming to, to a PhD student's department to distinguish guests like yourself who I think a PhD student need to take advantage of these people being around and try to meet them, listen to them, if not in having a personal conversation, at least attend their lectures, attend uh, their seminars. Um, and third will be learning new skills. Okay. Every PhD student is asked to attend a couple of courses at least uh, to, to learn whether uh, statistics, for example, courses as for humanities students uh, or uh, methods. I, I attended eight, I was asked to attend two, I attended at least eight, if I remember correctly, because I was just very hungry for knowledge. I know that whatever I miss now, I'm not going to have the opportunity to learn later, yes. or to get to learn yes. later, or at least in this environment. It's it's now, I have the time now, I'm a student, I don't have a job, I don't have any kind of hard responsibilities on me. So these are kind of the professional thing. In terms of the personal thing as well, I would say that very few people are doing their PhD in their hometown. 
So go around, just meet people, yes. uh, enjoy the environment. Um, don't stay in the library all the time. You will be forced to stay in the library at some point. So, so don't push yourself <laughs> to do it when it's not a requirement. Just get your laptop and study uh, in the garden or, or in outdoor area. Just move around. I think that really have a lot of psychological positive impact on you advancing in your PhD because you don't feel yourself trapped into this identity. You feel that it's just yeah. part of who I am or who I will become as a future person in the future, but it's not trapping me. So um, I think that's very helpful. It's interesting if I could just finish with a coder, I suppose. I've been thinking recently about, you know, what, what have I made of the experience of working during lockdown? And I work at home most of the time anyway, and recently I've been working 100% at home and it's fine. But there is one thing I miss out on, which is I think ser serendipity, which is when you do things like go to run a workshop like the one you mentioned you get to meet people you know people say oh by the way while you're here let me just introduce you to so and so and you also acquire information you know you pick up a copy of a newsletter that's lying in the foyer or you read some posters on the wall and I don't think there's any equivalent to that in Zoom <laughs> yeah I completely agree well, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I, I think the, the insights you've given us are varied and, and very rich as well. And I'm sure they'll prove helpful to other researchers. So I'm very grateful to you, Inji, for sharing them with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for your valuable time and for the uh, generous opportunity. I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.